Okay, stop what you are doing right now and go download the Knights of Sikar. Like, right now. Like, I'm not joking. I was playing this mod on stream yesterday and I was absolutely blown away by it. This mod does an unbelievable job with the story-driven narrative campaign that you just have to play to understand. I've, like, not seen anything like it on Bannerlord. A brief lowdown of the mob for those of you who just kind of want to get the basic sim and go off and play it because you should definitely be playing it. It has a brand new fantasy world with deep lore, eight brand new factions with a new custom campaign map, the ability to place your own settlement on the campaign map and upgrade it from a village to a castle, which I think a lot of people have been wanting for a long time, a completely new way to build your very own custom troop line, a way for minor factions to form brand new kingdoms and existing kingdoms to be destroyed without them losing every single clan member and finally an engaging story that had me completing quest after quest doing completely different things that i'm just not used to doing in bannerlord seriously you have to play it to believe it so that was just a little lowdown for those of you who maybe just wanted to get kind of a brief understanding of the mod now we're going to a bit more detail so as soon as you load in you are greeted with a complete lore dump on this brand new fantasy world and the age of heroes and the legendary knights of sikar who fought the demons many years ago you are then met with numerous types of cutscenes follow follow on quest dialogue pop-ups and even these custom cutscenes that play a story in front of you the story then continues on and without many spoilers you end up at war with a dominant slaver faction who attempts to hunt you down for aiding the Sikans, an ancient race of enslaved people the slavers run the continent from the shadows with the support of every kingdom however after completing numerous quests you have a run-in with the knights of Sikar and find an unlikely ally to stand against the slavers as the story progresses you are introduced to more and more custom mechanics in the game such as being able to place your own settlement anywhere on the campaign map upgrade it creating your own custom troop tree, gathering resources for your village, acquiring followers to enhance your settlements such as merchants and bandit leaders which all have their very own separate quest lines. All of this was a part of many separate quest lines that were introduced as the campaign went on. I found myself bouncing between them. One time I was doing something for my own custom settlement, the next, next was progressing the custom Knights of Sikar quest line, then I was helping some random followers in my camp. There was a side quest that allowed me to discover more about the mystical nature of the Sikhan people. I was helping this young boy whose parents had been slaved by the slavers and allowing him to see into the future and actually bring back one of the other members of Sikhan's parents in some crazy way that I was just not expecting. Uh, this all kind of led to more and more story dialogue. And yeah, seriously, guys, just go download this. Like, the story is intense, and I, I can't recommend it enough. So now what we'll do is we'll jump into a campaign, and I'll show you guys a bit more uh, visually about these mechanics and kind of more about the story. Okay, so we are now in the campaign map, and we'll kind of look into a bit more detail about the mechanics I just talked about. So this is the custom campaign map. Uh, I believe it is roughly a little bit bigger than Calradia, uh, but still kind of keeps that uh, representation of the map. I don't think the model wants to make it too big, because then you are running around a lot to go ahead and complete the main storyline. Uh, but yeah, you have all these different custom cultures, many of them having their own unique kind of styles and systems. For example, one of the uh, main ones is going to be the uh, dynasty these guys are probably the most developed faction of all of them and of course they they take inspiration from the chinese uh cultures and the yan dynasty you can see some of the soldiers right here looking really really awesome uh, and very very cool these are some of the elite heavy yan infantry and currently what i'm utilizing in my playthrough uh, again you got crossbows and repeated crossbows and some really really scary units in the far east you have kind of a japanese korean-esque faction you have multiple factions over here which are more tribal based and like kind of more like Golic. Uh, you have hunters to the north you have Norse raiders uh, you have more of a Mongol s Kuzite faction down in the south you have a slaver desert faction who have risen up against their masters and in the center you have kind of more of a European slash Roman esque faction holding its own and each of these factions are you know got their own deep lore a lot of them also have their own custom start conditions we are running through in the beginning of my stream, uh, which again, I'll link down below in the description if you want to see more about this mod and my playthrough and me going through all the story and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're running through. Each of these have their own unique bonuses. For example, the uh, Norse faction in the, in the top are more of like these 
really good individual raiders so they get massive bonuses to the snow they get really good raid speed and they get really good speed when they're by themselves but as soon as they join an army they start to take these bigger negatives so again it's trying to really go ahead and represent that fact that they are these fast mobile striking forces whereas down for example uh down here in the uh, the yam they have really good economy and good agriculture so their settlements grow better they have better hearth which allows for better units to be recruited and a faster recruitable population however they get negatives to their kind of their, their dying kind of complacent culture they've been complacent for too long and that gives certain negatives to loyalty or or sediment culture uh, and this is a really well thought out system so uh that's going to be all the factions and you guys can see the custom campaign map over to the west here we have my very own custom settlement that i went ahead and built myself i placed this down on the campaign map as i followed the story and all the quest lines and again look at this look at all the custom quest lines each of these have like their own dialogues and stories uh, uh giving me information ma making me do several different things like for example there was a quest line where i had to go and defeat a bandit leader because we needed protection from the, the the roaming slavers as we try to keep hidden from them as, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video um and i had to go ahead and defeat him i defeated him in a battle he was then super angry and then went and, went and got the rest of his boys and refused to join me he then came and attacked my settlement and through this dialogue option i managed to convince him i retreated into a canyon and then we had some ambushes happen and it was just like a whole thing and it was completely different and something that just you know i've just never seen in bannerlord before so for example our settlement that we have placed we have plenty of stuff to do and all of this stuff is unlocked as the story goes on so you're not just immediately greeted with all of this stuff for example you can go to the resource deposit on your in your settlement and you can go and kind of create your own minecraft universe you can go and start cutting this stuff down so for example if i uh, rush my way over uh who oh, has got a person out there uh yeah if we rush our way over here uh, I, I can start cutting down these resources uh, you can see i'm getting one wood if i use a better weapon or a better more kind of indented uh, axe i'll start getting more of that right there i'm getting stone i can also go and kill uh, some boars uh, as well and all these resources are used to go ahead and upgrade this settlement if we go to the uh, settlement construction you can see that this settlement uh you know needs upgrading and you have these resources up the top and all of these upgrades cost these certain upgrades to go ahead and do for example if i wanted to build a clinic uh, i can confirm that it's going to start building the clinic i don't know if this upgrades but i assume it, it maybe will in the future or maybe it already does and i just haven't quite noticed it and you can see that it consumes these resources up here in the top left hand corner you gather these resources from winning battles so if i just go and fight looters i would actually unlock more of these resources and the bigger the battle the more of these resources i get for winning a battle which is a really really cool way i then also had quests to go ahead so i think i even have a merchant here now uh yeah i now have a merchant here uh, that i can now trade the sick arm people a little bit of a spoiler are are marked with this kind of slaver uh, tattoo means they're enslaved forever they can never be free and because all the major factions support the slavers um is they I can't trade with anybody so i had to do a quest to go ahead and get a merchant that then led me down this other route and i was doing something for the merchant in a completely different way i then also had a quest line to do uh something for the knights of sikar yeah the envoy of the sikar knights where i went to the sikar hideout and then it was completely destroyed and i had to investigate it and give my opinion on what happened by all these investigations like like I, I i i'm kind of rambling a bit but like the story is just so immersive and i can't believe that i'm still playing battle lord but yeah so that's all of that stuff you can also develop your own custom troop line at the moment i've made this uh this tiger warrior right here uh they decided to not make it so you can like basically do my little warband where you can expand your entire custom troop tree they want the players to still use the other factions units in caradia However, these are going to be some special soldiers that you can recruit. So you can basically make a whole like set of like special special forces uh, that you can recruit from your settlement and, and set them up. And each of these are different tiers. So you have tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, tier six, and it's basically just one troop line. So you can basically just make uh, you know a, an infantry line or an archer line, or maybe a different. Maybe you want to have like a, a four tier or archer line that then develops into some ultimate sword fighting infantry druid right at the end, and it's super easy to use 
these as well you can basically do that and then you find what you want to add kind of you know very similar to my other warband i think uh yeah that mod is definitely a very kind of a good example of how this does work i would i, I did mention this to the modder as well i wouldn't mind uh this being expanded a bit like having either the the main inventory screen pop up and i can just select something uh that'd be a very cool way of doing it honestly um or just having um or just having I know this screen expanded so it's easier so I have to cycle through everything yeah honestly they could make it so that you could just like open up the inventory screen uh, and then like outfit a soldier and then it's set like you can basically outfit a soldier like this with the appropriate stuff and then it saves it to it that would be amazing that would make life a lot lot easier so that's going to be that. That's going to be the settlement you can do. You also have your own player house as well that, again, can be expanded. So here's my player house. Here's one of my companions here that, again, is a story character. And you can kind of go around here. You can build stuff as much as you want. Uh, if we go into the main story, like, I've never found myself playing the main story uh sorry going into a village as much as i have uh in this campaign like when i tell you i've spent more time here than i have in my thousand hours of battle talking to all the people and everyone else you know there's, there's so many different quests and cultures uh, and and stuff for me to explore whilst we are uh diving into it like there's there's many quest lines and there's people who need stuff and, and want stuff constantly you know one of the uh, the main ladies right here is sally and as you can hear, the voice at the voices are all so the voices are all done in this mod um, for the majority of the quest line, and they are it is all Mandarin. So if you are a native Chinese speaker or you speak Mandarin, this will be perfect. Again, there is a, there is a lot of voice acting, but yeah, again, the, the mod is uh, is made by a, a native Chinese team, so that's why you know the, the main story is in Mandarin. However, you can just read the text. There is a translation. Um, they, they they are looking for more translators though, so if you want to maybe help out this project, I've of course left the link to the uh, the mod down below in the description, so you can check that out. There are also tons of custom uh, custom. Uh, things in the game as well. You have these really cool custom buildings, uh, the Sikhan church right here that you know will, I'm sure will lay a, 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 a bit of you know, information in here. You have uh, Chaos Stones, which we haven't actually encountered in the story playthrough so far over on my stream, uh, so we haven't checked that out. There are numerous amounts of these custom roaming parties that all have their own story. Again, if you've kind of, if you enjoy uh, like stuff like Prophecy of Pendor, this mod has really been kind of, uh, kind of said that people, when they've been playing this, they feel very much like a prophecy of pendor playthrough and i really get that vibe as well uh, I've, I've put in about four or five hours into the mod so far and i definitely get that pendor style of vibe which is always an amazing thing because prophecy of pendor one of the greatest mods of all time uh, there is no cap there whatsoever um uh, so yeah i mean there's loads more to the mod there's like a new animal system as well where you can get like pets and stuff uh, which is really really cool uh, all the quest lines the custom stories like yeah just just go and download this mod. Like, I don't know if I can praise this mod anymore. Just go download it. It's for 1.8 right now. I'll leave a link to the Nexus page and also the mod DB down below, along with the mods Patreon as well. So if you want to support the mods Patreon, feel free to or definitely help them out, kind of get more assets into the game and you know allow people to work on the mod more because of course modders do this for free. So if you want to help them financially, you can do so as well. I'm definitely going to be helping out and supporting their Patreon down below. As I said as well, they're also looking for more developers to help out on this mod as well. Um, so if you want to help out with the translation or you've got, you want know, a 3D model, for them or help code they clearly have some amazing scriptures with everything that goes on here um so definitely i'm sure you know they, they would be happy to uh yeah have anyone on board if they're dedicated enough to help work on the mod itself uh so yeah definitely the mod is amazing for sure i think probably some of the, the stuff that's lacking right now are the, the custom armors for a lot of the factions like if you go over here for example uh you know a lot of the factions aren't as developed as say the yan dynasty that's clearly been their focus but yeah you know the, the samurai kind of japanese one you know, they have a lot of vanilla battle assets um which you know again is understandable it's not me complaining it's me just pointing it out so you guys have a good understanding of the mod you know when you, I, it's just like that uh that games design uh diagram when you know stuff has to give they can't do everything so they have to focus on some stuff and other stuff can come later and clearly they focused on all the other amazing mechanics and the awesome quest line and the story and stuff like that um so yeah you know a lot of the factions still have uh, are lacking custom assets and stuff which will be added in later again i believe these guys have some yeah these guys have some cool armors i believe is it these guys yeah these guys have some cool armors 
uh, and the cavalry as well, I believe. Uh, yeah, have some some Kuamas. But again, there's not as many custom assets for a lot of the other factions uh, quite yet in the mod itself. Uh, as well as that, the, you know, the campaign map is a, a you know a bit kind of empty at the moment. I'm sure we'll get a lot more life put into it uh, and more kind of like decals and stuff like that added in, which will be really really cool uh, to kind of bring the life more roads and villages and like these uh, big empire roads again, stuff like that, which will really fit the lore. Um, and add loads of stuff, you know, these cool custom boats and stuff like that are always nice to see Swampland. You know, more detail, I'm sure, will be added to the campaign map to bring it to life and just add more detail. But again, not their focus right now. It's adding in more of a story, which is just absolutely superb. So I did ramble a little bit at the end of this video, which I do apologize for. But as you can tell, like, this is just an awesome mod. I can't praise it enough, even though I have been praising it constantly during this video. But go play it. Let me know what you guys think of it down below in the description. Go show the developers some love, and I'll see you guys in the next one.